of the position to present to myself man so I'm not gonna give up my right to do that but uh so but I will contact her if, if you guys are gonna force me so to say it's only gonna be it's by force and I give you no other option to uh stop talking uh review the video myself due to them not sending something that can be reviewed but uh <clears throat> So I got to say on that, like I said, it'll, it'll be by force. It's not, uh, you know, you're not giving me no other option. So. All right. Thank you, sir. Your objections are noted. And I'll see you back here on February 1st at uh, 9 o'clock a.m. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Take care of yourself, sir. I will. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Says baby, oh. what's your name? Yes. Asia. The court will call the case of the state of Michigan. The case says state of Michigan versus Castilian Cotton case numbers 19F00535, as well as 22F00428. Grace McDuffie for the people. <laughs> Castilian Cotton. Thank you so very much. All right. These PD cases. Who's uh, I'm sorry, uh, Assistant Public Defender Sandra White on behalf of Castillo Cotton. All right, we're supposed to be here for sentencing in one case and both cases, I guess. And Mr. Cotton did not make and keep his probation appointment. I did. I did. I I went to um. I went. I've been going to my community um. My community sir. service thing dropping everything. I didn't. I didn't know sir, anything. Sir, sir, do you hear me calling you? I said, I said probation appointment. I did not say anything about community corrections. I thought that's where it was, ma'am. I didn't know. I didn't know I had to go anywhere different. I've been. I've been reporting every week. I've been going there dropping every week. You can ask them. I, I have to go there today at Thursday. I've been. I've been dropping and everything, doing everything that you told me to do, Ms. Washington. I didn't know, I did not know the, I thought I was supposed to go to community services, man. You're done talking? Yes, ma'am. When you were entering your plea, after you got done, I gave you a phone number and told you to call them within 24 hours by the next day at nine o'clock AM in order to schedule a time to have your pre-sentence investigation report done. I tell everyone that after their sentence. Um, your honor, I went, when I went back to go report, they switched me to a miss, a miss, um, sir, do you, are you even, what I'm I'm gonna, I, you see you talk, you're just talking, you're not listening. Did you hear what I just said? Yes, ma'am. I heard what you said. I must have missed. Who did I say to call? Who did I say to call? You, I thought you said community service. I, Who did I, I, I just call, tell you to call? Co probation officer, ma'am. Okay. All right. So do you understand that now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Who are you going to call? My probation officer, ma'am. All right. Do you have a pen to write down the phone number? Can I have a pen? One second, ma'am. All right. We're going to print out a notice with it on there for you. Okay. So you need to stay here. In no, the, no problem. And See, you're, still, you're talking to me again. You need to stay here in the courthouse, and we're going to take that piece of paper out to you before you leave, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. All right. Sign the card. I'll go to the Might be here. All right, I'm going to reschedule the sentence in this case to January 11th, 2024 at 10 o'clock a.m. You need to call probation tomorrow after 9 o'clock to schedule yeah. the appointment to have your pre-sentence investigation report done, okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, you're going to owe the court an additional $60 re-referral fee. This will be your last time 
to yes, get if you don't get it done, then the next step is to put you in jail so we can get it done that way. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, okay. That, I was confused because usually you're here for preliminary matters, and so yeah. Okay. All right. And Bella Law. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. Okay. Which matter are you here on? I'm here for City of Riverview, Michigan versus Terrence Smith. It's an objection to a garnishment scheduled for 11 a.m. I believe. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. okay. So, Mr. Meldy, Your Honor. Mel Meldy, okay. There is a certificate of satisfied judgment on your matter. Correct. We filed a certificate of the satisfaction of the judgment and a garnishment release. But this matter was pending at the time that we submitted that. This objection, I believe, was filed in July and the court adjourned to today's date. Okay. Okay. Can you? So is that going to be in my file? Or is that like an actual? Oh, that's this file. That's the one eight. But the other one is a paper file also. But the documents were in my file. Okay, well, so this is another um, cluster because it's a part in person, part actual file, part not because of my file system that went into effect. So, um, okay, Mr. Smith, can you please unmute? Yep. yep. Hello? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. So you're in court. Can you please remove your hat? Yep. Uh, can I ask the court uh, which case has two cases today? Yeah, so the attorneys are here on both of them. So I think what I'm going to do is put all three of you in our breakout room to kind of see if there's any resolution of any sort. Okay. Are, are there two separate case matters here, Your Honor? There is. Two there separate are. garnishments. And I'm, I'm only are. here for... Case number yes. 11. No, five G. Yes, yes, I'm aware of that. And Ms. Ellison is here on behalf of MSR Holding. And so there are um, judgments filed on both and garnishments filed on both. And so Mr. Smith filed an objection. And unfortunately, he filed an objection in July, which is when we were switching over to our online filing system. Mm -hmm. And also, unfortunately for Mr. Banks, my file doesn't have any designation, and so everything's lumped up into one big mailbox. And so, it things some things took a little bit of extra time to get uh, put onto the calendar. So, in the meantime, the garnishment was continuing apparently on your matter because now that judgment's been satisfied. So, I'm putting you all in a breakout room because I think one may um, affect the other. So, that's why I'm doing that. I'll also like to uh, the judge that um, that uh, objection or the garnishment. Uh, it's the wrong address and uh, wrong race. It says I'm a white male, and it also is the wrong oh, part. No wait, wait, wait! Time out. Okay, all right, and we can address that as well. And you can also address that with the attorneys in the breakout room. Okay. Thank you. Everybody, please hit join. We're going to take a short break. Be back at five. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm having some issues now with this my file system here. Okay, so let's go on the record 
in the matter of MSR Holdings, LLC versus Terrence Smith and all occupants, 18395. And then there's also the matter of the city of Riverview, 201105 uh, versus Terrence Smith. So, um, first appearance, Ms. Ellison, please. Good morning, Your Honor. Attorney Elizabeth Ellison, P82098 for the Plaintiff MSR Holdings, LLC. Okay. And Mr. Smith, just please remember you're in court. And so if you're chewing gum, that's not appropriate. And then uh, Mr. Smith, your name for the record, please. Uh, Taryn Smith. Okay. And then Mr. Melvi, your appearance, please. Your Honor, P83783 on behalf of the city of Riverview, Michigan. Okay. All right. So first, as I did indicate, um, before I put all of you in a breakout room, Mr. Smith filed this objection and garnishment in July. And based upon some flaws and inefficiencies with the my file system, um, it took a little bit of time for that to get moving and then scheduled. So, um, and in the meantime, it appears as though the judgment with the city of Riverview has been satisfied. Is correct. That correct? Yes, actually this, this case was scheduled for July, this objection to the garnishment, but it was adjourned because Mr. Smith had stated, it called the court and stated that he was in a car accident. Correct, September 15th. Okay, so this was on the docket in September, Correct. Okay. And then adjourned out. Oh, okay. So, all right. And so, Mr. Smith, um, are you withdrawing your objections to garnishment as it relates to the city of Riverview since that matter has been satisfied? I do not. Uh, even though uh, he's saying that he's been satisfied and there was a proper way to uh, go about this, I believe my objections to the garnishment is valid. They have the wrong address and the wrong person, and I was still garnished. What do you think? They get the wrong guy? Your Honor, the okay, objection sir, I have... Just, just one moment. Mr. Smith, I've already indicated to please get rid of your chewing gum. Yep. Okay. And so... Um, okay. And so you want... You want to proceed with the objection on the city of Riverview matter, even though you have paid your judgment in full. Yes, even though I paid a judgment in full on on someone else's behalf, because like as I stated, it was the wrong address and wrong race of, of person. What do you mean? You paid it on somebody else's behalf. I don't know what that means. As in, when I went to Riverview and asked them why I was being garnished, they told me it was for an ambulance drive to the hospital. And the ambulance drive itself was only 900 So I was, all, I was also overcharged for the ambulance drive. And when I called them, they said the person on file came from Balmy Apartment 1, and it was a white male. I am a black male, and I lived at Apartment of Balmy 3. I'm black with a capital B. Okay, well, sir, let me just clarify something. In a, if you're objecting to the gar, if you are objecting to the garnishment, there are there are certain there's a certain basis by which you can object to the garnishment. Okay. If you are objecting to the judgment, there's a different procedure that needs to be followed. Okay. And that's what and that's what that sounds like it is here. Okay. So when and when filing the different procedure that needs to be filed. Would that bring me and the creditor back to court to settle the uh, garnishment uh, matters? It would it would bring you back to court to address the judgment, which ultimately could address the garnishment. But first, okay. the first step is to address the judgment. And that issue is not properly before the court. And okay. I understand from your perspective that since you and the attorney are both here, that perhaps it could be reviewed. However, the attorney doesn't have all the information that he potentially would need to have because there was not any notice regarding anything as to the judgment. So okay. therefore, we can't proceed on that issue and you'd have to follow the procedure accordingly. Okay. 
So as it relates to that, um, there doesn't appear to be an object, a valid objection to the garnishment on that matter because it appears as though your your issue is with the judgment itself. Yes, ma'am. So question, um, if my issue is with the judgment itself, it being not valid, they are, the law is still able in some ways to garnish me, even though I'm making claims that the judgment of the garnishment is not valid. You had an opportunity to participate in the previous case, Your Honor. The judgment was entered in 2020. Uh, yeah, I didn't have an opportunity. Attacking the, the underlying judgment. Um, sir, do you live in Canada or do you live in Wyandotte? I live in Canton, and during the time of this judgment, I was homeless. I didn't get any warning or any sort of hearing about this or a judgment. So a default judgment was just made on my name. Again. Well, hold on, sir. Hold on, sir. Let me just say this, that the law requires the creditor to send the information to the last known address they have on file. Okay. It is not the responsibility of a creditor to track down individuals that may have moved and not change their address. Okay, that's so understandable. I understand, and I understand that there can be hard times that people fall on. I certainly do. However, the when did you relocate from Wyandotte? Uh, 20, 2018. Uh, the court has uh, evidence of me being evicted from there with my previous case with the the uh, the same case I have today uh, on the on the evidence there will show that I was evicted in 2018, which what I'm I guess what I'm trying to say is even I understand uh, the consequences of not answering court hearings and things of that nature is just I never received the hearing. I never received any paperwork about this. I didn't receive paperwork until I was able to establish the new home. Then I received paperwork saying that my checks is going to be garnished. And that's why I filed the objection to begin with, because I didn't know okay. anything. Sir, when did you move to Canton? Uh, 2018. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank um, this was served upon was your address in Rivermink. And I can understand that you're saying the court has record of your eviction. However, I had Mr. no doubt. Mr. Mel, Mr. Oh, Mel, let me finish, please. Please let me finish. Velo Law Office did not have that information. And I don't know as to what extent was taken to locate where you were residing at that point. I was not on the bench at that time. Oh no, I no, 2020 I was on the bench. 2018 I was not. Your Honor, if I may, I and I don't want to address the previous judgment because again, the Michigan court rules prevent him from attacking the underlying judgment, but he was personally served. I'm looking at the proof of service right now. On July 27th of 2020, he was personally served. When and where? I didn't have any domicile and during <laughs> Counsel, hold on, Mr. 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 Smith, just a moment. Counsel, that is what Mr. Smith's issue is because it's saying that the individual that was served was white. Mm -hmm. Correct. I understand that, but Mr. Smith is not. Again, he had the opportunity to participate in the case. He was defaulted. That case is well beyond. Counsel, I, counsel, I understand what you're saying, counsel. Mr. Smith is indicating that he was not served. This shows personal service was obtained on a white male on July 27th of 2020. Mr. Smith has indicated he was not even residing there. So the whole judgment was was moved, moved forward based upon this personal service. So if Mr. Smith were to file something regarding the judgment, there's an issue. That's a separate matter. We're here for the garnishment today, which has been satisfied. He's attacking the underlying judgment again. 
Council, I am very well aware of that. I'm very well aware of that. I went through this specifically so that Mr. Smith could understand what the procedure is and the fact that he cannot proceed with attacking the judgment today. I've already stated that. What I'm also stating is that Mr. Smith has stated that not only does this pro service, this process server, or the note, the, the notice certificate of service say that he's white. So does the ambulance information. So his statement is that he paid the judgment of somebody else and that it's not him. And I understand from your perspective that your client's been made whole, but perhaps Mr. Smith has a, has a valid claim that it wasn't him in the ambulance ride. However, Mr. Smith, there is a way that that has to be done and I cannot initiate that way. That has yes. to be done through another matter. Yes, ma'am. So that is why this, so there's not a valid objection to the garnishment because the garnishment was proper. Whether or not the judgment was proper is another matter that this that is not before the court right now. Okay. Does that make sense to you, sir? Yes, ma'am. Question, even though uh, the has been satisfied, as you stated, I can come back at a later date to uh, file the uh, proper procedures to address the uh, the manner in which the uh, the judgment has proceeded. And and me uh, basically just restating, I believe that they uh, garnished the wrong person, correct? Sir, that's crossing the line for what I can tell you because that would be giving you legal advice. Oh, that's there are what I court said. rules and statutes that address relief from judgments. That's all I can say. I can't tell you anything else beyond that. Okay. Okay? Yep. Okay. So, Mr. Meldy, I believe you are all done with this matter. Is the court going to enter that satisfaction of the judgment? Oh, that, that's on, that's on my, that's on my file. Um, just signals, please. Thank you. I will review that council. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's in my system to review. All right. Thank you, your honor. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Okay, and so we are on the record. My mic also goes in my own. On the record, we're still on the record now, um, Ms. Allison and your manner. Your Honor, and so his objection to my garnishment as well. Um, I did file a written response to it, Your Honor. <clears throat> So, Mr. Smith, you filed an objection to garnishment. Yeah, I believe it's happening the same way with the first case with the uh, creditor. Uh, uh, I have evidence uh, showing that the the landlord had a worker there that uh, vandalized my well, B and E and stole my things. I also have numerous letters stating that he, I don't know why, but I even told him that I was joining the military, but yet he still proceeded with the eviction. Uh, I understand the consequences of, uh, 
of me uh, not uh, making those payments while on active duty. But I will say during the time I, I was not allowed to make payments because of basic training. But uh, but I will I will uh, work with the courts and with the uh, uh, lawyer as best as I possibly can to get this resolved. Okay, so let me just clarify a couple of things because counsel, I um, my my file system here is frozen. I'm sort of throw it out the window, but um, so I when so I don't have access to that document. I have your response, and I have the order. All that's paper, but the other is um, on. Um, the, my base or my on base, and so when was the judgment in this matter entered? Your Honor, I'm actually looking at the register of actions because we weren't the previous attorney on this matter. So in this matter, it was a landlord tenant action with a money judgment. It looks like the original judgment was February 26, 2018. It said judgment entered by consent as to him, um, judgment by default as to all occupants. And then in April, there was an order filed for eviction. And then in May, it looks like there was a motion scheduled. And then the motion was served in May. And then there was a hearing held on the motion, Your Honor, in May 23rd, 2018. Then there was... Well, said, counsel, counsel, what was that motion? I, I don't, Your Honor, I that was from the previous counsel. I'm just going off of the um, register of actions, it looks like there were filings going back and forth in regards to the order of eviction. So I do believe that he participated in this action, Your Honor. But I don't, I can't say that definitively um, because unfortunately I don't have the hard file for the underlying judgment, Your Honor. It says, to, it says an order entered to stay the eviction on 621 of 2018 and then they, on August the 6th of 2018, they came back and a motion was granted for the eviction. So this yeah, during, I also find that a little weird as well. During that time, that's when my army unit decided to intervene. And at that point, I didn't know what was happening after that when they intervened. Uh, I, all I know is they sent letters to the landlord and to the courts about them uh having me bhh having payment problems with the military uh that's that's what from what i can remember okay well and there is a civil service the civil service members relief act there is that however um it appears that that issue was raised. There was a hearing, okay, by Judge Callback on August 6, 2018, order regarding the hearing. The state placed on the matter on June 4, 2018 is hereby lifted. Defendant indicated he'd be able to appear after July 29th, failed to appear on August 6. Plaintiff applied for an order of eviction after August 13th. The plaintiff shall submit an amended judgment reflecting the original balance, $2,936.48, plus an additional six months of rent, which is $700, minus the payment made of $1,860 for a new total of $5,276.48. Amended judgment shall be submitted under the seven day rule. And so, sir, that judgment was submitted. And it appears as though you had been attending or participating in this matter as there were hearings that were held. Yeah, that's uh, when I was, when I got out of basic, I went to AI and I was able to obtain a phone to attend. Okay. And as I think I've indicated before, sir, the court does appreciate your service to our country. And, um, but there is an amount that was due and owing 
as to whether or not that judgment should have been entered or not, it appears as though it was addressed via hearing and there is a stay of proceedings because of that. And so there is a judgment that had been entered. And if you did not provide a forwarding address whereby which you could receive your mail, I, they don't know where else to send it. So they send it to your last known address. Yeah, that's, uh, like I said, same thing. I, after at returning home, I became homeless because of that situation. I was homeless for about two years. Uh, and during that time, I didn't know what was going on with my legal proceedings. But did you contact the court to find out? I didn't have a phone. I, at the, like I said, at the during the time I was a homeless veteran living in a homeless shelter. Okay, but you know, you knew which court it was in. You could have. I had no. Uh, when, uh, at the time of me going to the uh, homeless shelter, uh, it was actually the police escorted me from Wyandotte all the way to downtown Detroit. So during that last very days that I was in Wyandotte, I was in downtown Detroit for about almost two years at the homeless shelter. So I was not getting anything. I didn't have any sort of money to even travel to get information. I tried contacting my unit. Uh, they never reached back out to, uh, during, uh, to me during that time of hardship. Uh, it's now being rectified by my right. army. But um, again, like I said, I will work with the courts and the lawyer as best as I can to try to see uh, what will be the good options for, for all of us. Okay. And sir, I can understand that there you had some tough times that you had to endure yeah, and I had a payment issue. The uh, the army was not paying me correctly uh, to send my landlord money, and they did okay. send a letter stating this. And I believe they did send the court stating that they are uh, figuring out the money situation with me, so the landlord will be paid. It's just that it it's a the army is a hurry up and wait situation, and my landlords didn't want to wait that, that time any sooner, and it kind of drove me to be homeless. Well. So I wonder, I don't know if that's necessarily accurate. I mean, I mean, there, there's a balance there, right? I mean, yep. um, but what, so Ms. Allison, um, do you want to enter into a payment plan with Mr. Smith? Not at this time, Your Honor. I did tell him in the breakout room he's free to reach out to me just because I'm sure he would have to look at his um sorry, I'm so sorry, Your Honor. He would have to look at he would have to look at his um payment schedule. He was saying he was contesting the underlying validity of the judgment. So to, in the breakout room, it made it seem like he wasn't, you know, didn't want to really deal with it. He's free to reach out to our office, Your Honor. Today, I'm just asking for you to deny the objection. It looks like it was a state of Michigan uh, tax return. It's 900 and uh, 900. I apologize, Your Honor. I think it was like $918. We're just asking for you to deny the objection and we will uh, keep the garnishment. So, Mr. Smith, um, you know, these are not funds that are protected funds, correct? Today, one more time, protective funds at my uh, federal, uh, my is it my federal well, income? Meaning, no, meaning that um, so your funds are not exempt from garnishment, correct? Uh possibly not. I I do pay school. I have uh, school debt, child support debt, car loans, and well, bills and. Okay, okay, but so when I'm asking about whether or not your funds are exempt from garnishment, it's whether or not um, you, I mean, they're, they're not disability-based, correct? No. 
Your Honor, I will say a uh, state of Michigan income tax garnishment is not um, anything that would be um, prohibited from a garnishment because it's from the state Correct. of Michigan. Correct. And so um, you don't have any bankruptcy proceedings pending either, correct, Mr. Smith? Do not. Okay. And the judgment has not been paid in this manner. And the garnishment was not improperly issued. And so and it doesn't say that the balance is incorrect. So, um, and there's not an installment payment order. And so the court has to deny your objection, sir, because they are not valid based upon the court rule. And um, the law. Okay. And I understand you had some concerns with the validity of the judgment, but again, that's a different procedure. But it, okay. it also doesn't sound as though you have the same issue in this manner that you did the other manner. No, I believe I, I was living there. I I did uh, leave the home and inform the landlord that I was going to the military. He was okay with it. I guess what I find weird about it is he knew I was in the military and he still decided to evict me, which like I the only thing that's the only thing I find he agreed and was aware of me joining the military, but months after me leaving, after telling him, he decides to evict me. Well, that's a separate issue, sir. Okay. I can and I understand what you're saying, but that's a separate issue that um, is not before this court. Okay. okay. Yep. All right. So the court has signed the order on objections indicating they are not valid and that the garnishee shall immediately release all with help on the plaintiff attorney. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. So I don't need to do the order and submit it on my file. You, you already did it? No, we already had it printed up. Perfect. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Have a good weekend, both of you. You as well. Right. Bye. Thank you. Off the record. Twerk, 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 twerk. I'm black.